Looks like we've got another unhappy Honda here. This is a 2004 Honda CRV all-wheel drive. The owner says that he has a check engine light on and he thinks it's something to do with the EVAP system, but he also has an ABS light on and is having some ABS trouble. The ABS is actually kicking on when he's just coming to a normal stop. So let's get it plugged into the Innova 5610 and see if we can figure this out. Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. This is a 2004 Honda CRV all-wheel drive. This is also a manual transmission. And the owner says he's got a check engine light on and having some ABS issues. Now these may be unrelated. He says he thinks the check engine light is for an EVAP code. And of course that would have nothing to do with ABS, but let's see if we can scan this and see if we can at least get pointed in the right direction. Let's see if we can't get this sorted out. Why is it that Honda OBD ports are always broke off their mounts? I don't know why that is, but that's always the case. But there we go, we're plugged in. So we'll see what it says here in a minute. Okay, looks like we've got a P0497 evaporative emission system low purge flow. If that's the only code we have, that's usually gonna be your purge valve or purge solenoid valve, and that's up underneath the hood. So let's go take a look at that. We even have a little diagram under the hood and it shows right here that the EVAP canister purge valve is right here, right on top of this intake. And that's right here. What I'm gonna do is take this off and then we're gonna test it. This should be normally closed. That only opens when the computer tells that to open and allow the EVAP canister to vent into the engine and reburn those EVAP fumes. So let's just pull this off real quick and see if that's our issue. Now it's a good idea to hit these screws with some PB blaster or something like that, which will penetrate in there because these screws have got a little bit of rust built up on them. We'll see if we get lucky here. Yep, we did. Awesome. You don't always get so lucky on stuff like that. Let's have the one little small hose here. These little mini clamps. And then the one electrical connector, just press that in. And then this purge valve just kind of sticks into this little port in the intake. So just carefully twist that or rock that out. There we go. All right, let's take this over to a tailgate and we'll get this set up with a nine volt battery and or see if uh, when we apply power, we're able to blow through it. All right, so this is a very basic test. I just have both sides of this hooked up and I'm just gonna apply power with a nine volt battery and listen to this. Getting a pretty positive click sound. Now this is normally closed. So if I blow through this end here, I can't blow through it at all. Now if I try to blow after I click it, okay so it's opening and closing like it should. So at least we know that this purge solenoid or purge valve is good. Let's put this one back in and keep going see if we can figure this out. Now another thing we might want to do is just make sure that we have engine vacuum on this port right here. If we don't have any engine vacuum right there when we start it then this might be plugged and might need to be cleaned out. Okay, so we know that's not the issue. All right, we'll just put this back in just like we took it out. Just gonna hit this with some of this blaster silicone lube just to make sure that that slides in a little bit easier. Now the P0497 low flow doesn't necessarily mean that it has low flow or that there's a blockage, but really now what we need to do, we need to go the other direction now. So we're gonna have to follow this line down, make sure we don't have any blockage and also make sure that it's not disconnected anywhere underneath. We might even have an issue with the canister, but let's follow that down and we'll go take a look. Okay, so I tested the purge valve and everything looked fine. We had a clear line, we had engine was pulling vacuum. Everything's working good there. Here I was gonna get down underneath and take a look at the evap canister there's a two-way valve there's a vent valve down there and i was going to get down and start testing those next but i decided to shift gears and get a little bit more involved in the abs so we've got a 17-1 left rear wheel speed sensor open or short let's turn on live data for abs go for a quick test drive and see what shows up here on the scan tool so i'm going to scroll down so there's the left front right front left rear and right rear wheel speed so let's go for a quick drive 
Well, you can see there right away, we do not have any input coming from the left rear wheel speed sensor. Now you do need to do a visual inspection before you go throwing new parts at this. We're gonna pull off the wheel and see if we can take a look at the wheel speed sensor and see if, you know, sometimes it just, they get real rusty and they swell and that ruins the gap and so the, the sensor won't work. Let's go pull off the wheel and take a look. But well, we're not getting the, uh, the ABS shaking and activating like the owner said, so I don't know if that's happening intermittently or what but definitely with no signal from the left rear wheel speed sensor we're bound to have some sort of an issue so we went on a test drive we verified that we don't have any communication with the left rear wheel speed sensor we may need to buy a new sensor but let's see if we can just take it out first and see what that gap looks like and see if it's all rusted or ruined now it did say that it had an open or a short that might actually be that it's electrically just you know fried the whole thing might be shorted out either way let's go take a look and see if we can figure it out and then uh, we'll see if we need to order a new one Now here's our ABS wheel speed sensor. And it looks like it goes around over here and continues on underneath. But let's just pull out this end here real quick and see what it looks like. All right, so we just have the one 10 millimeter bolt that holds this in there. That's pretty crusty in there. I would suggest you spray this ahead of time with some PB Blaster, some penetrating oil. I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes here before I try to wiggle out the old sensor. I actually let this sit overnight, hoping that that PB Blaster would maybe soak in a little bit more and do its job, but really pretty doubtful on that, to be honest. This is so stuck in there. Probably just gonna snap this off. Now, if I do snap this off, I may have to take off this entire hub so that we can drill it out, or I might be able to put a screw in there, a really hot screw, and pull that out. I've seen a few YouTube videos where they've done that. What I'm trying to do is just break it loose by spinning it. We've just got a lot of rust in here. This end of it definitely will lift up, but that of course is just gonna snap off if we put any pressure on that. And that may be what happens here. We might just have to snap this clean off and then drill it out. We might have got really lucky here or it might be snapped off completely, I can't tell. It's moving, but I can't tell if we've broken it off inside there. We'll find out here in just a second. Well, we've definitely broken it. I just can't tell how far down it's broken or if it's just right up here at the top. See how that's spinning? I'm sure that we don't have the whole shaft spinning because it feels just like the cord part of it spinning. Probably at this point, gonna have to break this off and if we can't drill into it and pull it out from above, then we may have to take off this whole hub. So the wires just came out and right now it's just broke off flush with the surface of the hub here. And that's kind of what I figured. So now I'm going to try another trick here. I'm just going to heat up this screw and see if we can thread it in there. I'm going to heat it up with the torch and get it in there as far as I can and then see if we can pull that out. And that might extract the rest of that sensor. Pretty close to red hot. See if we can thread that in there now. Hopefully we can get that down there enough that we can grab a hold of that and pull it out. You want to go until it feels pretty firm. All right, then we'll just pour some water on that. Let's take a crack at it now. I don't know if we're going to break this screw or what. It is in there good. Look at that, we got some of it out, but we did not get the whole thing to come out. Well, this one's a little bit coarser thread and it might even be a, a little bit thicker. If you compare this to the new sensor, you see we're still not going all the way through, but I think this is worth a shot. We're gonna give it one more try. Let's give it a go here. Sizzle, sizzle. Well, we definitely got a lot deeper with that one. All right, let's give it a go here. Give it a few whacks. Sure hard to get leverage in this little area in here. Something happened. What do we do? No freaking way. I think we got it. I can't tell for sure, but I think that pulled it out. So that's what we got out. It looks like most of it, but at the same time, I'm thinking that maybe the tip still busted off and stuck inside there, which is a pretty major bummer. I mean, that is a huge, huge part of it. But yeah, you see the little metal pickups at the end. Unfortunately, they're still inside the hub. So I don't think I can get it out without taking off the hub. But sometimes that's how it goes. 
let's stop messing around with this. Let's just pull the hub off and do what we gotta do. So we're gonna take the brakes off first. I'll just take the caliper off and just kind of set it up over here out of the way. And we gotta take off this rotor. There we go. Lucky we have this Vessel Impacta screwdriver. That would have been a pain. It looks like this one's partially stripped already. Let's see if we can get it. Uh, we got lucky. Uh, make sure your parking brake is off or you'll have a really hard time getting your rotor drum combo off. There's just a little bracket here that holds this brake line. I'm gonna take these two bolts off. All right, now I'm gonna disconnect this upper control arm. This is a 17 millimeter. Now we need to loosen this axle nut. Now this flange that's locked down, you really don't have to undo this when you're undoing it with, the, uh, with an impact, but a lot of times I will if I can get to it easily. You really don't have to do that. The impact really doesn't seem to make much of a difference when you're taking it off, as long as that's not running over any threads or anything. Now back here, we also have this parking brake line connected over here on a little mount. I'm gonna undo it. Now we can drop that down. We've just got a little bit more play in that line. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna have nearly the room I was hoping. So we are gonna have to take off these lower control arm bolts here. Now, unfortunately, this does change the alignment of the vehicle and that's what I was trying to avoid, but looks like that's the only way that we can get this loose enough to drop down. There we go. All right, now all we need to do, pop out the axle and there's the hub. Now it's still connected to the parking brake. And if you look right there, that's the rest of our wheel speed sensor. And it's definitely still in there. So we're gonna have to either drill or punch it out. I'm just wondering if I can tap it. Yep. All right, now you're gonna laugh, but I went and found this screwdriver that is already bent and looks like it's gonna work perfect for us. So let's see if we can get that the rest of the way out. Got it. That's it right there. That is the rest of the wheel speed sensor. Yeah, now you can see all the way through. Uh, we'll run a brush or something in there, get that nice and clean. Well, luckily I've got this perfect kit here that has all kinds of brushes. And I think this is gonna be the right one right there. I'm just gonna run that in there a few times with the drill. I wanna test the new one, make sure it fits in there. Kind of binding up still. So let me clean that a little bit more. Wipe out all that junk. Let's do another quick test fit with the sensor. See if we're looking okay now. Just can't seem to make it past that last little spot right there. So we're gonna make sure that this fits without having to force it. I just don't wanna put this back together and then have to force it together and then break off the new sensor. So we're gonna make sure that this will fit easily. You know, the fact that I'm still getting all that brown colored rust dust tells me that we still have quite a bit of buildup on here. All right, now let's give it a try. I'm just gonna spray this with a little bit of this uh, silicone spray, silicone lubricant by Blaster. Give it a try now. There we go. That's gonna work. It fits flush now. I'm happy with that. Let's take it back out. Let's put it back together now. Just kinda try to line up that axle in the center of that hub. All right, we can put this one in. This is just that 12 millimeter bolt that holds the parking brake cable. Okay, now I'm gonna take off this mount here. Looks like there's just these little plastic things clip in, easy enough to break out. This is for the wheel speed sensor mount like that. And we need to follow that around underneath and take off the other connector. Okay, it looks like back here, it's just a little plastic snap that snaps up into the vehicle. That piece is so brittle that that just broke off, which is fine. Looks like we need to get up underneath to get the other one. Right up there, there's a little orange connector. That's the one we need to get to somehow. I'm thinking the only way I'm gonna be able to get to it is by dropping down this EVAP canister so that I can get to that orange connector. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I just took out this little 10 millimeter bolt here and over here so we could drop this canister down. I think I can get to it now. Perfect. Now, 
before I move my hand too far from here, I'm gonna try to feed the new one in and try to push that together. Okay, it's lined up. Okay, I got it. That wasn't easy, but we got it. Now, while I'm up here too, while I have my hand up here, I'm just gonna push this one in. This little, little plastic snap snaps into place right there. Canisters back up and our new sensor is connected. All right, then we can clip the new sensor in right here. Now I'm gonna wait till I get everything else on. First, I'm gonna put this little brake bracket back on. These two bolts hold this bracket on here. Put our axle nut back on. Now I'm just putting that on snug for right now. We're gonna torque everything once we get it all back together and on the ground. And then we can put the rotor back on, or rotor drum combo rather. Just make sure you line up these tapered holes if you're gonna reuse these screws. Some people don't use them. Some people leave them off, that's fine. That's up to you. I usually just put them back on. Okay, and now we can put the new wheel speed sensor in. And that does fit nice and snug like we want it to. All right, now we can put the brakes back on. And we can get these caliper bolts started. Let's get those snug with the impact real quick. And torque these caliper bracket bolts to 41 foot-pounds. We'll torque the upper control arm here to 69 foot-pounds. And we'll torque this lower control arm. We'll just go ahead and get this one torqued as well. All right, now to torque this axle nut, I just put the parking brake on. So hopefully this won't spin very much. If it does, I can have somebody jump in here and step on the brakes as well. But we need to torque this to 131 foot-pounds. And now I'm gonna just restake the end of this nut here too. And we can put the wheel back on. We got it all back together and back on the ground. Let's go for a quick test drive and see if we can get any data out of that left rear wheel speed sensor now. All right, now we still have the other code that we're, uh, we're looking at here. All right, so let's go into the ABS system. All right, now because this is a permanent code, I think we need to erase this before that light's gonna go off. So let's try to erase this. Erasing clears all ABS, DTCs, continue, yep. Erase was successful. Turn the ignition off, then back on. The ignition is on, let's just hit enter. We still have a short somewhere, or that new sensor is not good. So we need to diagnose this further. You know, I was kind of just throwing the new sensor at it, thinking that the sensor itself was shorted out, but we probably have an open or a short somewhere else. So let's go down and take a look at that, and then let's get our multimeter and see if we can't diagnose this a little bit further, see if we can find where that open or short is. All right, so I came underneath here, to disconnect this, I actually had to drop the EVAP canister. Just a couple plugs, unplugged and dropped the EVAP canister down so I could get to that harness. And you know, there's the orange plug that we were plugged into. And look at this, totally Wi-Fi. There's no wires on the back of this. You can see two wires right here. That's our ABS wiring. And I can't tell if those have been chewed or what. So now we're gonna have to get into this harness, probably inside the car, and figure out how we're gonna make that continue. But yeah, that might be our EVAP issue as well. I think what I'm gonna do is get inside the vehicle and see where this goes up through there, pull this harness part way up so that we have a little bit more access because it's really hard to get to from down here. But there's your problem. I just didn't see that when I was plugging it in. You know, I was just reaching for this connector and it's still mounted in here and plugged it in. Didn't realize that there's nothing coming out the back of it. So definitely was our issue. Let's uh, get in the back and we'll, we'll pull out this little grommet and see what, where that goes up into and then uh, see if I can take this off and figure out a way to connect those wires. All right, so here it is coming up into the back under the seats. And yep, a lot easier to work on this now. You know, if I would have done a little bit better visual inspection, I wouldn't wouldn't have replaced that sensor but sometimes you just go with what you think in my case i was wrong but part of the reason i jumped at that is the part was so inexpensive so we have a yellow with a red stripe and then a white with a red stripe the rest of these wires look okay nope take that back look at that found another broken wire in here and i bet that has to do with our evap but we found another issue here so let's pull this back a little bit farther and get all this fixed you know, sometimes you think the codes are unrelated and it's very possible that this right here is the cause of our EVAP code right here because that's going down to that wiring. 
First, I'm just gonna fix this one here. I'm just gonna use one of these little heat shrink connectors. There it goes. There we go. All right, that should be good. I always like to test this, but don't test it. Don't pull on it until it's cool. That looks good. That looks good too. All right, now there's the piece that was chewed through and this is just the part of the harness. I know that there's tools to take these apart and fix this, but I don't have them. And I was just searching around online and I found a replacement connector looks exactly the same. So I actually found this on eBay, about 13 bucks and uh, got it here quickly. Looks like it's gonna work just fine. All we need to do is connect this. Just make sure that we get the wires on the right side. Looks like the yellow is on this side and white is on this side. Well, these look like they're aluminum wire, but that should still work. That looks good. That looks good. All right, let's tuck everything back in. Now, this stuff isn't entirely necessary, but just adds a little bit of protection to the wires. I just happen to have some of it, so figured I might as well throw it on here. Uh, hopefully the rats don't like this flavor of electrical tape. Well, that's ready to put down through here. We'll see if we can push this grommet through and snap that in place. There we go. All right, so now we can go down below and make the connection to the new wheel speed sensor. And then of course, we'll hook this up and see if we got it fixed. All right, here's our new harness right here. And I just clipped it here into the side. The little OEM clip broke. So I just put one of these little zip tie clips and it looks like it'll hold it. All we need to do now is just plug it in. Nice solid click. That looks good. All right, now we can hook our EVAP canister back up. All right, and then we can put the little cover back up. All right, well, we got the ABS sensor all connected and the wires repaired, and now we've got the EVAP canister back up. So let's go plug in the 5610, see if we can't uh, get that code to turn off, and then we'll go for a quick test drive and see if we can verify the repair. All right, I'm just gonna turn the vehicle on while this links. Let's see if we still have a short there or see what we got. Okay, so here's our low purge flow code. You know, the wire damage was also to an EVAP line, and so that might be the reason for our low purge flow code here too. What we'll probably do is have to erase this. So let's go back into ABS and enter. Right now it's scanning the ABS. Okay, so it says we have a left rear wheel speed sensor open or short, and it's saying that that's a permanent code. We did this earlier and it came right back. Let's see if this will do anything. Erase was successful. Now it says turn ignition off, then back on. And then it says press enter to continue. No ABS DTCs are presently stored in the vehicle's computer. We got it. Let's see if we get a bonus fix on the EVAP code there too, the low purge flow. Let's go back into global OBD2. Okay, so it's still showing up, but we haven't erased it yet. So let's go ahead and erase this code and see if it will stay off or if it comes back on for a different reason. Let's hit erase DTCs. Erase was successful and the check engine light just turned off as well. So now it's gonna do a quick rescan and we'll see if we still have any problems with that low purge flow code or if that was it. It may have just been that wire and we might be completely done. No powertrain DTCs or freeze frame data presently stored. Let's go for a quick drive and see if we can verify the repair. We'll pull up some live data from those sensors and then we can call this one fixed. Let's see if we can pull up some live data. Left rear pulsar failure. All right, at this point, I was pretty discouraged and kind of wanted to give up, but I knew that uh, I had to get this fixed and get this figured out. So after a little bit of searching around online, I, I learned that the pulsar failure is most likely that magnetic ring is inconsistent or damaged, which probably happened when I was cleaning out the little bore there in the hub for the ABS sensor in order to make that fit. I probably pushed the brush a little too deep and ended up scratching that. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, I just took apart the hub off camera, but here's a picture of what it looks like. I definitely damaged that and that is not going to give a consistent reading. So really the only thing to do now is change the bearing out. Now I let the owner know that this happened and I let him know that this was my fault and the bearing replacement is definitely on me. And he's totally cool about it. He completely understands. He even offered to pay for the part. So now we get the uh, 
pleasure of changing out a rear press in style wheel bearing and uh, that's really the only thing we can do to fix this there's not uh, there's not really a fix for that other than change that bearing out so let's uh, change the bearing out here I'm just uh, using a slide hammer to pull out the hub now I need to take out the snap ring then we can use this new tool from Astro tools and get that all set up and press out the old bearing All right, and then there's the old bearing out. Now we do need to clean this up here, especially where that snap ring goes. Now here on the hub, all we really need to do is just a diagonal cut with a grinder. And then we can crack this. I'm just using the Mayhew Dominator pry bar. As long as you see that crack, that'll come loose and you'll be able to slide that off of the shaft. And here I am pressing in the new bearing. And put the snap ring back in place and then we can press the old hub back in and then we can put this all back together All right, now with the new sensor, got the wiring fixed, a new wheel bearing installed, let's link to the vehicle and see what's going on. I'm gonna pull up the ABS so we can get some live data from those wheel speed sensors. Let's go for a quick drive and see if we get any input there. Well, look at that. We've got input on every wheel now. Well, more importantly, that's what I wanted to show you. The dash is all clear, no check engine lights, no ABS light. This vehicle is fixed. We're just gonna drive around a little bit more. Just wanna make sure we got this figured out before we hand this back to my neighbor. We've got a happy Honda now. We've got no check engine lights on the dash. Now the reason I'm doing a little bit more of a test drive than normal is because there's a lot of forums that I was reading about this issue in the ABS wheel speed sensors. And a lot of stuff I was reading about this said you can really only use Honda OEM parts. Now some of these cars are pretty finicky when it comes to the type of ABS sensor you use and even the, you know, the brand of bearing. I just picked up a Master Pro at O'Reilly on the bearing. I got the wheel speed sensor on Amazon, pretty inexpensive, about $13. And then the little harness connector, I just found that on eBay and that was, you know, really the only option that I could find for this. The one thing I noticed is the wiring on that was aluminum, whereas the original harness is copper. You know, I wondered if that might mess up the signal or cause an issue there, but it looks like so far it's happy. No check engine lights, no ABS lights, and uh, I think we're good to go. Well, that's it. I definitely could not have figured that out or fixed this problem without having a good scan tool like this. I mean, you can just see how valuable it is to have a scan tool like this. The Innova 5610 is great because it does do the ABS codes, but that really got us pointed at least in the right direction. Now, of course, you saw the mistakes that I made. Number one, I should have done a better visual on those wires. I should have traced them a little bit farther, at least looked a little bit farther. I just couldn't see the other end of that connector until I dropped down the EVAP canister. My next step was to head to the back near the canister and take a look at the other valves on there. There's like a two-way valve on this and I think a canister vent valve. I was going to take a look and test those and maybe I would have seen the wiring then. But really I could have avoided some of this headache of having to drill out that wheel speed sensor and ultimately end up changing the bearing as well had I just been a little bit more careful and looked closely at the wiring. Really not a huge deal. It really wasn't that bad changing out that bearing and the, the wheel speed sensor was a little bit of a headache but you know once we got it all drilled out the new one is working fine. Let my mistakes be a, maybe a lesson to you. Just look a little 
little bit more closely at that wiring and or there's other tests that you can do. You could do the resistance test on the sensor. I could have verified that there wasn't a short within the sensor and or I could have also just done some jumper wires to the other side which we knew was working just to see if the harness and the wiring was any good. Now once I put in the new wheel speed sensor and I got that same fault code what I was going to do is just some jumper leads from the right side to the left side to verify that our sensor wiring was intact but of course once I pulled down the evap canister for access to back probe it that's when I saw that the uh, connector wires had gone Wi-Fi. So my mistake I uh, definitely am owning this one. I'm letting the customer know that uh, the bearing is on me and the uh, the wheel speed sensor is on me really because that was just a bad diagnosis on my part and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys like the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. Now just doing one more quick scan. I'm sure we're going to have some incomplete monitors because I haven't driven this around you know for hours but I did do a, a nice long test drive. See there you go. We still have the O2 monitor, the cap monitor and the evap system monitor but if we go into the system menu let's just do another quick scan on the ABS. No DTCs presently stored. That's awesome. No problems at all. This is good to go. So this, of course, will have to go through the drive cycles to get the other monitors to turn off, but I'm happy to give this back to the owner and this is good to go. I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up some of the parts and tools used in the video, but I also will put a link to this Innova 5610. This has been a very valuable scan tool and I've been using this a lot lately. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.